A few weeks ago, one of my clients experienced a nightmarish scenario when they received a super scary email titled Urgent Action Required Website Suspension Notice. Well, can you imagine the panic? Email itself said, hey, we detected some suspicious activity on your site and we had to take it down temporarily. Yikes, right? Well, but here's the kicker. My client had gone for this cheap hosting plan that didn't bother with daily or weekly backups. And guess what? My client hadn't even installed any backup plugin themselves either. Let's talk about the major facepalm moment, right? Now they were facing a massive headache to solve and trust me, it was no walk in the park. So here's the plan for today. I'm gonna show you how to dodge this whole mess. I'm going to show you how to back up, restore, or even migrate your WordPress site in a minute. And in order to do so, we need to install a plugin. And this plugin is called Everest Backup. It has a free version, as you see, more than 4,000 active installations. Recently updated, good rating. It has two versions. It has a free version, and it has a pro version. If you take a look at the features description page, then you'll see that those are the free features and those are the premium features. That is advanced reporting, flexible automatic schedule options. You'll get more advanced auto trigger backup features. Later, I'm going to show you what does it mean. And what's nice, you'll get the cloud integration. Later, I'm going to show you how to back up a site to the Google Drive or to the P Cloud. But you can also use a Dropbox OneDrive. Backblaze and Amazon. You'll also get unused images cleaner, which is usual if you don't want your huge media files to be included to your backups. Now you're probably wondering how much does it cost, so let's take a look at the pricing here. And as you see at the moment, Pro version costs $59 per year and it's a two website license. There is also a 21 website license, which is $79 per year. And agency plan is for $129 per year and is for 99 websites. And those are the official prices. But I have a good news for you. If you take a look at the description of this video, then there is a nice 15% discount coupon for you. Just follow the link, use a coupon and you'll get the discount. Now that we've got that out of the way, let's dive in what this plugin can do for us. Which means we're going to go to the plugins. Add new. And let's search for this one here. Install and activate it and you have a free version. I'm going to compare two versions. I'm going to compare the free version on this site and the pro version on this site here. Now I'm going to go to the Everest backup and settings. Let's see what happens here. First, there are three tabs, general, cloud and the information. Under the general, you can add your admin email. This is used for notification you can send the test email. You can select whether to display the tag types. If you take a look at the tooltips, then it says what's what. Now you can choose whether to auto remove the backups. And if you set it to zero, then you'll keep all the files. But if you want all the backups that are older than 30 days to be deleted, then just set the days here. Now you can exclude files from the backups. For example, if you don't need zip or mp4 or other file types to be included, then you can exclude them here. Next one, was it delete the backup after the restoration? Yes or no. And this one here is a speed for the fetching process. Slower, faster. This one here is a free version. And for the pro version, you get two other options here. First is server compatibility mode. You can enable it if you are facing issues with scheduled backups. And this one here to exclude thumbnails. That is, you can enable only original full-size images and you can exclude image thumbnails. This will decrease the backup size and the time for the backup to be taken. Next one, let's go to the cloud options here. For the free version, there is nothing shown here, but take a look at the add-ons menu down below here. If you open it up, then you'll see that Everest Backup has a bunch of add-ons. Most of those are pro add-ons. But for the free version, you can install and activate Google Drive add-on. Let's do that. So it's done. Now back to the settings, cloud, and you'll see that I have a Google Drive option here. So I'm going to log in with the Google. I'm going to connect my account. It says that Everest Backup wants additional access. I'm going to grant it. And it's done. 
Now I can select the transfer rate, whether it's slow, fast, or somewhere in the middle. Save settings, and the cloud integration is done. If I take a look at the Pro version, then I install a pCloud add-on. In a similar way, I'm going to log into the pCloud. I'm going to grant access, and it's done. Nothing complicated here. We have also a third tab. It's our server information here. If you're not a techie person, then probably it doesn't say you much. Now I have configured my plugin. Next, I'm going to go to the backups. This one here. Here I can select what is it I would like to be included in the backup. Database, plugins, teams, media, and other files. For example, if I don't need media files to be included, I can just ignore it. Usually I tend to back up everything, so I'm going to leave it on. Now you can choose backup location, whether it's local server or your cloud server. You can add a tag, for example, test site backup, and whether to delete the backup from the local web server, yes or no. You can keep it here or there. If you take a look at the pro version, then basically the same options here. Next one, we can schedule our backups. If we do that, then we can choose cron cycle. Hourly is for a pro version only. Free version has daily, weekly, and monthly options. I'm going to choose weekly at 3 o'clock, which is a time that my site has the least traffic. Once again, whether to save it on a local server or Google Drive, I would suggest you to back it to the cloud because if it gets hacked, then most likely also your backup files will be deleted. If the backup files are uploaded to the cloud, then you can restore your site from the drive itself. Once again, choose what will be included. And if you would like to be notified after a successful backup, then you can enable the notifications. Save settings and done. But the Pro version also has an automatic backup option. That is, if you would like to create a backup before the WordPress core update, then enable this one. Every time you plan to update your plugins, it would be wise to make a backup. So enable this one. Same goes with the Teams. And if you would like to make a backup after the WooCommerce order completion, then you can enable this one here. I'm not going to do that. Just save settings. And let's go and create a backup. I'm going to go to the manual backup. I'm going to press on the backup now button. And now depending on my site size, my database size, and my web hosting, it may take time. For the smaller sites, it probably takes 30, 40 seconds. But for the bigger sites, it may take a couple of minutes. When the backup has finished, then you will see the pop-up on the screen. First, you can create a migration key. Second is you can download a file, or you can just close it down. If you go to the Restore menu and open up the available files, then you'll see all the backups available. Now, let's test the restoration. Just for demonstration, I'm going to add some gibberish here. Update. I'm going to go back to the Restore Available Files. Now I'm going to select the latest backup, click on the rollback button. It asks for the confirmation. Yes, I'm going to roll it back. And usually restoration gets done much faster than the backup itself. I have noticed that usually it will be completed within 20 or 30 seconds or so. But once again, it depends on your site size, your server, and on your database. Okay, so it took approximately 25 seconds. Rollback completed. Go to the dashboard. Log in, and let's open the site. You'll see my random text has disappeared because I restored my previous version. Now, once again, let's go back to the Everest backup and restore. And pay attention that the maximum upload size limitation is 512 megabytes. If you want a bigger upload size option, then go to the add-ons and install this backup light upload. And if you need even bigger upload size, then you should install the Pro version. Now back to the restore. As you see, with the light version, we increased the size to the one gigabyte. Now I'm going to log into my server, open up the WP content folder. There is a ABWP backups folder here, and this one is a backup file. I'm just going to upload it here. And when it's uploaded, then you'll see that you can either to restore or save the backup. I'm not going to restore. I'm just going to save it. If I go to take a look at the available files, then it's here. 
Next, let's explore how to migrate your website from one ter server to another. And hey, if you've been enjoying this video so far, then don't forget to smash that like button. Your support too means well to me. Now you may want to ask, what is a migration? Well, basically, migration allows you to move your site from one server to another. For example, I have this free version site here, and I have this pro version site here. They are on the different domains. One is testwpsimpletouch.com, and the other one is bloxy.wpsimpletouch. Let's imagine that I would like to replace my free version site on this domain with a pro version site. And in order to do so, I'm going to go to the migration and clone. I'm going to select the backup. If I don't have any backups, then I'm going to go to the backup page and I'm going to create one. I have a backup from yesterday. I don't want it. I need a newer one. So I'm going to go to the backup page. I'm going to click on the backup now button and I'm going to wait for a bit. After the backup is finished, I'm going to click on the generate migration key button. I'm going to copy the key or once again, I can go to the migration clone menu and I can select this latest backup here. Generate the key, copy, and this is my pro version site. I'm going to go to the destination site, open up the migration clone menu. Next, I'm going to open up the clone tab and paste this key here. Click on a verify key. It's verified. It displays the file, creation time and the size. Next, I'm going to press on a clone button. It's going to download the file from the host and restore it. As with the previous restoration, I have noticed that it works really fast for my servers, but pay attention that depending on the server locations, file sizes and so on, it may take a bit more time for you. When the restoration is finished, then you'll see that website is cloned. Go to the dashboard button, log in and done. As you see, site name is changed. Let's open it up. This is the title here. And if I open up the source site, it's also here. Now there is a suggestion to go to the settings and permalinks and just in case save your permalinks in order to avoid some issues. And next step would be just to go and see what's happening here, whether everything works. Seems to be okay, which means the migration was successful. So as you see, packing up your site is just one part of the puzzle. We also needed to address the possible security breach on their site. So I made a separate video on how to clean or hack the website. And be sure to check out this video on the screen. It should be over there or over there somewhere on the screen. And in the meantime, take care and keep your site secure.